Welcome back friends. In this video we will be talking about uh, the plant water and uh, sugar transport. So we have already talked about uh, the morphology of plants. We have seen uh, what are the cells that are making plants, the tissues uh, that are the part of plant organs uh, like root, shoot and leaves. Now in this uh, we are going to know the physical function, the morph, I mean the physiological functionalities of a plant cell and in physiological functionalities there are two major functions to play. First is the production of food using photosynthesis and second one is uptake of water from the soil. Both of them are very very important from plant perspective. So if you begin with that first thing here we are going to talk about is uh, water and sugar transport in plants. The first thing that uh, I, I started discussion about this whole topic I told you it's very very uh, stunning that how these large trees like redwood plants take up water from the soil and put, take it up to the 300 meter long I mean not 300 meter 100 meter to 150 meter long trees like 300 feet and over 300 feet long trees that's a very interesting thing to know. Now here you will understand how they actually take water and nutrients to that place as well as how they transfer the produ produced food that is sugar throughout the plant body. So water transport in plants I can give you a simple analogy just like we drink soda from a straw right. What we do we create a pressure we take out something we suck it right suck means what we do we simply we take out the air. So if you take the air out it creates pressure so that. So we call it a cohesive force. Force means molecules sticking to each other and they create this linear chamber of molecules one after another as they are sticking to each other. Due to that force they tend to attach to one another and once if we bring one out all of them will start coming out. And second thing, second force that is involving is adhesive force. Adhesive force means attaching of the molecules to the wall of xylem cells. Just like here in this case the cohesive force is between the soda molecules in this case of plants is the water molecules. The cohesive force between different water molecules to hold them together and the adhesive force between the water molecule and the wall of the xylem cells. Both of them works together to give us this idea. You see waters involve with each other with the help of this cohesive force. This is the cohesive force that interacts water one with another. So if we bring what one water, drag one water, rest of them will completely be dragged there. And adhesive force means they will tend to interact to the, to the wall of xylem. So here we have a theory to explain how plants uptake water. We call it transpiration cohesion theory for the transport of water through xylem. And why it's called transpiration cohesion? You know cohesion is one of the biggest force that is involved to drag water because the water molecules are attached with one another and if we, if I draw a xylem like a like a pipe the water molecules are attached with one another so if I if I drag start dragging water from some force if we apply some force to start taking up water and re removing water from there it will slowly start attaching to other water so sole set of water molecules start to come out from the root region toward the top of the plant because the water molecules are cohesively attached with each other. So this is the first thing that we need to do that is to create a pressure to create the pressure and second thing is that due to that pressure cohesive force will take action and the water molecules will move. So the first thing we need evaporation to build that pressure. Evaporation of water through the leaves occurs through the stomata you know stomata cells will open evaporation of water, of water occurs and generates what we call is a sucking force that resembles to that of taking a soda just we uh, just take the pipe in our mouth and suck the soda out we are not actually sucking the soda out we are sucking the air out as a result it creates a pressure of air that pressure involves in the soda soda it will push the soda molecules through the solution through the pipe up to the top of your mouth same thing here evaporation creates the force due to that force I mean as the water is leaving it creates a sucking force and that force creates the water molecules to move towards the forward direction towards the top and as water molecules are attached with one another so a series of water molecules behaving like a, like a column will move towards the top okay that's the idea and here we have two things here in the xylem and phloem you know. Uh, in the plant um, leaves also we have xylem and phloem 
Now the phloem as you know, these are the cells that we uh, easily take out water as it's at, as the water is evaporating slowly we are going to take that. So if you look at the transport how it looks like in the big picture, it's the chain of water molecules added one after another due to the cohesive force and moving from roots towards the leaves. Now the thing is the energy comes from the sun because sun applies the heat due to the heat they need to go for the respiration. So if you ask me how this process is driven to the forward direction, I will call you the energy is provided by the sun to do that because stomatal closing and opening is going on during the transpiration and for that reason if the water is, is lost a lot, in that case to fill that out, water molecules will bring, will be going from the bottom towards the top due to that pressure and cohesion will help them to be linearly arranged with each other plus the adhesive force between the water and the wall of tract, wall of xylem will help them to properly guide it towards the forward direction towards the top. It, we call it a transpirational pull. It's the water vapor in the air space of the leaves that diffuse down its water potential gradient and exits the leaf via stomata. So the water potential gradient is getting down and that causes the water to flow up. So what is water potential? We will be seeing what is water potential in a moment but this is the idea. We call it transpirational pull because due to the transpiration water is moved from the plant uh, leaves as a result a force is built up and the water start coming from the soil towards the top of the plant as you see in this case it is coming from the xylem. Now transpiration produces negative pressure, we call it a tension in the leaves, right? And due to this negative pressure, the plant leaves try to try to get away from the pressure. How to minimize the pressure? It will start pulling water to the front. So these are the air water interface, as you see air water interface and as it is moving, water vapor lost and replaced, as you see as it is moving. If you look at here, the, the complete structure is provided here. This is These are the water films and this is the mesophyll cell, between the mesophyll cells and waters, uh, and waters are evaporating due to that negative force that is built up, a chain of water will start coming to the top. As you see it here, cohesion and addition, okay, we call this process ascent of sap. Sap is the water and nutrient combined water, so sap is coming. It's ascending. So you call it ascent of sap and it is maintained due to two different forces, the cohesion forces between the water molecules and the adhesive forces between the water molecule and the xylem wall. So you see it here, water molecules are moving from the root and as it's creating a pressure, the water molecule is driven towards that pressure to minimize that pressure. And they slowly start moving like a chain because they have a cohesive force and the adhesive force towards the wall keeping it steady through the xylem tube towards the top okay two types of force ad addition and cohesion and then finally they move to the top of the xylem and they will be removed to the mesophyll cells and they will migrate through the mesophyll cells finally and through the stomata the water will go out again so by this way water keeps on moving from the plant uh, from the from the leaf using stomata and that creates a pressure um, to minimize that pressure water flows back to the top towards the leaf that's the idea this is the overview of the whole process from the root hair through the xylem of the of the shoot up to the level of the leaf okay and if you look at here there are some some values given here we call it psi psi is known as a water potential and the water potential is varied for the different reasons, from the different region of the plant tissue. For example, the, the water potential is very, very negative, very less. It goes very down at the, at the leaf. And as a result of that, it creates the pressure. Then only it will, it will force the water to move up. If the water potential is up there, then no way water is going to move. The idea about water potential is that water will flow from higher potential to the lower potential. See, the water potential at the root is minus 0 0.03, while the water potential at the, at the plant leaf is minus 100. So, it moves from the high to the low range. 
So see what is water potential. Water potential is a measurement that combines the effect of solute concentration and pressure. The concentration of the solute and pressure is measured. Solute in this case the water and determines the direction of movement of the water. So wa water always tend to move from high water potential to low water potential. Okay. And in this case, the high water potential is present in the in the root region minus 0 0.03 while on the minus 100 sorry, minus 100 in the in the leaves okay so this is in the root this is in the leaf that is the reason water flows actually we created this to understand the process very carefully like MPA is the unit to measure the water potential we call it as a mega Pascal Pascal is the idea of pressure so it's nothing but how the water and solute applies the pressure that is it because it depends on the pressure guys because every time you think of plumbing and the system of how water flows between the pump using pumps and between the uh, between the pipes you always know if there is high pressure and there is low pressure water is always going to flow from high pressure to low pressure now the thing is normally if, if it's if not respiration if the plant is not going respiration the water potential of the plant root and the water potential uh, of the leaf is slightly different the water potential at the root is always high because there is a lot of water concentration there lot of solute concentration there in the soil so the water potential is always be high in the root section of the plant but on the other hand the the leaf region of the plant does not have that much of water content so obviously the leaf water potential will be low the pressure of the water at the leaf will be low that's for sure but when the respiration is going on the water is furthermore evaporated creating very less concentration of solute at the leaf which allows the water to come from high pressure region which is root towards the low pressure region which is the leaf of the plant that's how the water flows from root towards the plant and we call it uh, zero MPA is for the pure water at the sea level at the room temperature we call this water potential now how solutes and pressure affect the water potential actually water potential is the measurement of pressure created by the water so obviously if, if there is more solute more pressure will be created right so we call it also as an osmotic potential right and there are different names like solute potential which is known as suffix s of uh, psi and we know as pressure potential as suffix p for the psi pressure potential is the physical pressure on a solution that is applied towards the solution while solute potential is a proportional to the number of dissolved molecules that is present so if you have high concentration of molecules dissolved obviously solute potential is going to increase and if solute potential increase water potential also increase because in this case water is acting there is a solute and in this case pressure potential is the potential that is applied on a solution not applied by the solution applied on the solution that is pressure potential and another thing you need to know is the target pressure Turbid pressure is a measure, I mean it's a pressure ex exerted by the plasma membrane against the cell wall and that keeps the cell very much steady and very solid. That means you know cell wall is present and cell membrane is inside. Now if there is not enough pressure to push the cell membrane towards the cell wall then the cell it looks like very very, I mean the cell will not stand straight it will go down. And if you see, normally if you take some, some of the fruits and if you dehydrate that thing, if you take a vegetable, uh, raw vegetable, I mean, or, or herbs from the, from, the, from the market and you put it in the right condition, it will go down because the water will be evaporated. So there will be no water to create pressure to pull, I mean, to push the cell membrane towards the cell wall. As a result, it becomes placid. Uh, so what you need to do? You, if you put it into the water again, it will absorb some water and again it becomes very solid because it becomes turgid. As a water will insert in its, itself into the cell, it will create some pressure towards the cell membrane, towards the cell wall. So cell membrane will be pushed towards the cell wall, creates a high tension buildup, so they become turgid. That's called turgid pressure and those strong 
variety of cells and, and structures we call them turgid okay and we calculate this normal water potential that is simple psi equals to psi s plus psi p psi s is a solute potential psi p is the, os, uh, psi p is the pressure potential so the water potential equals to solute potential plus the pressure potential now this is uh, to explain you about this process in much more details for example uh, there is a sucrose solution uh, and a cell is placed inside that when the sucrose solution is 0.4 molar sucrose solution with the pressure potential of 0 and solute potential of minus 0.9 okay now let's say initial placid cell if you take a cell which is living healthy cell initially the water potential was minus 0 0.07 pascal okay mega pascal there minus 0 0.07 and now if we put it into the sucrose solution 0.4 mole sucrose solution in that case the water potential of that sucrose solution is less compared with that so what will happen the water potential is less outside inside it's more so water will flow from the cell to the solution so the cell become what will happen the cell become dry as a plasmolyzed we call it a plasmolyzed cell why because in this case the cell will lose some water so it becomes very plasmolyzed condition so it's, it's destroyed now now it's not usually destroyed because the structure is the structure can be maintained in the future because they also have this cell wall remember cell wall never does the shrinking and stuff because they are brick like structure the shrinking occurs of the cell membrane now if i again take this cell from here and put it into the uh, into a mixture where the solute potential or the water potential is higher if you take it put it in the solution with what water potential say one in that case water will again flow from the solution inside the cell pushing the cell membrane towards the cell wall making the cell much more rigid again because of the cell wall uh, this plant cells are such different I mean they are such a versatile to hold these situations but if there are animal cells there are no structural elements to give them any hard shape like cell wall so in, in animal cells if there is any plasmolysis cell will burst open and everything will come out but in case of plants as there there are cell walls covering the cell membrane it will hold uh, the structure okay now now the another thing if, if the same placid cell is placed in the solution as you see here the water potential is high zero pascal here zero megapascal and here inside is minus 0.75 so obviously it will water will flow from outside inside and make it more turgid so obviously water will flow from high water potential to the low water potential so that's about how water flows from the root from the, from the soil through the root up to the top to the leaves. Now we need to talk about how su sugar is translocated. I mean the sugar is produced in the leaves and once the sugar is produced in the leaf it should be dis distributed through different cells in there. So this, this is called sugar translocation or food translocation whatever you say. It causes sugar made in the leaf mesophyll cells because most of the time the mesophyll cells are the living cells they carry all those uh, necessary equipments for the photosynthesis like chlorophylls and stuff uh, so photosynthesis is going on in the mesophyll cells so what happens now once the sugar is produced inside the mesophyll cells it will slowly diffuse to the phloem to the phloem cells in the vascular bundle of the phloem cells and then what happens Com companion cell load dissolved sugar into the phloem STM using energy and in this case they require active transport for this process to happen happen because what happens we are pushing something from high energy to uh, from low energy to low concentration to high concentration because you know this companion cells have low concentration there inside and high concentration there outside so we need to go against the down against the concentration gradient for sugar here so we need to push it with some energy atp acts as energy source to deliver it and water moves into the cell with high sugar concentration due to osmosis as osmotic water flow happens uh, so let's let's look at it in much more details in this picture you see this is the transportation pull as a result a pressure builds up and water slowly start to move through the xylem up to the top of the plant 
and in this case what happens on the other hand sugars are produced in these leaf cells through which sugars are distributed towards the those those companion cells but the thing is companion cells and through this uh, this this is these are the um, the stm those those flow the phloem uh, transport cells and those phloem cells we need to put them inside so what we need to do we are going against concentration gradient so in that case we need to apply some energy to put it back to the press because the pressure is very high there so we need to put a lot of pressure there so red arrow means active transport we have to do though we have high sugar concentration there but still uh, due to the pressure difference we need to add some force using atp hydrolysis and put the sugars into the into the tubing made up with phloem now once we put our sugar into the phloem uh, and this is dissolved in water and that water dissolved sugar can move and easily can flow down to the bottom because now it will flow by basic rule from high concentration to low concentration and once the food is prepared the higher concentration will be towards the leaf lower concentration will be towards the root but all of the cells require food for their living so once we put them here during that process water sometimes move towards the towards the xylem uh, why because of osmotic balance because you know here there, there will be higher concentration of sugar low concentration of water so bring it back water will flow from xylem to the phloem and that is the water osmosis it creates some osmotic pressure so that thing keeps on going so osmotic pressure is going to minimize the concentration so that the cells won't burst open as well as the active transport is going on to push sugar to the nearby cells and then finally down the concentration gradient sugar will flow to the later cells to the bottom of the plant so see these are the stages an active transport is required and this is how the active transport is that uh, we call it in, in many plants phloem loading requires active transport as you see there are proton pumps for that proton pumps are used and they are very much effective because protons are pumped out once you add protons out using some atp because it's an active transport process uh, atp hydrolysis provides the energy protons is pumped out and this proton is taken from the other side along with the sugar and then we use the concentration gradient generated by proton to drag sucrose inside the cell otherwise sucrose cannot directly ins insert inside the cell from those uh, companion cells to the stm the because stm is created by the phloem and until and unless the sucrose is brought to the stm the sucrose cannot be distributed because this is the actual system to distribute food throughout the plant cells or throughout the plant body and we have produced all those fruits in the parenchymal cells which is in direct contact with the companion cells so from the parenchyma sugars inserted into the uh, companion cells Shoo companion cells use this process of proton gradient preparation and then a co-transport machinery a uniport machinery using the proton gradient to take sucrose out to the stm once the sucrose is in the stm then easily it can flow through the stm to rest of the cells in the plant body okay so that is the overall process of how this thing works how the 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 food slowly distributed and how water is taken in both this case it requires certain pressure and forces you need to know what is diffusion you need to know what is active transport you need to know what is osmosis to understand the process if you don't know about any of these terms i won't recommend you to pause the video and watch those videos in my channel first then come back here and and watch this you'll be learning that very very fast so that's for it guys thank you